Welcome back. It may be freezing outside, but Canada's housing market, red hot. That's no surprise to any Canadian looking to get into the uh, housing market. The Bank of Canada recently updated its housing price affordability index. Not a good picture there. Showed Canadians will now need to spend, get this, 30%, 37% of their disposable income to service a mortgage, 37%. The affordability index hasn't been that high since 2008. Scotiabank also just released a report today showing how much of a crunch there is in Canada's housing supply. Canada lags behind in the G7 when it comes to housing stock supply, even adjusted for inflation. How do things look by province? Pretty bad. Canada's most populous province, Ontario, falls to the back of the pack alongside Alberta. Get this. Ontario would need to add over 650,000 new homes, and Alberta would have to add 138,000 new units just to catch up with the rest of the country, and the rest of the country is last in the G7. So that's the backdrop for today's Finance Committee convening early to address Canada's housing inflation crisis. But with the pandemic and the global supply chain disruptions driving up inflation, what exactly can and should the federal government do in the short term to help Canadians get into the market? What's driving up the price? Let's get our panel of MPs. Rachel Bendayan is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Associate Finance Minister. Pierre Polyevre is the Conservative Finance Critic. And Daniel Blakey is the NDP's Finance Critic. Welcome, everyone. Happy New Year. Good to see you all. Uh, Ms. Bendayan, I'll start with you. Um, your government has indicated plans to create more affordable housing through the Housing Affordability <coughs> Fund as a response. You and I both know that won't come close to adding the supply needed. Building more units in the mid to long, our mid to long term solution. So just specifically, what will your government do in the short term to address the housing inflation problem? Well, thanks, Evan. And let me just first acknowledge that you know the situation in in Quebec is is also dire. Just on Monday night, um, there was a, a homeless man. I believe he was 74 years old who who died outside um, in in Montreal overnight. Um, and and our government is absolutely aware of the issue and committed to to solving it. So far, we've uh, housed over a million Canadians. This is a 72 billion dollar housing program that we've put together. But Evan, you touched on something that I find very interesting. Supply is absolutely one side of this issue, and our programs, many of them, are uh, are committed to creating uh, new constructions, renovating old buildings in order to create more supply. Just today, uh, Minister Hussein, with Minister Boissonneau and, and Mayor Sohi, announced uh, new constructions out in uh, Edmonton, Alberta. But I also want to talk about what we can do in order to um, bring down some of the unproductive demand in the housing market. Um, there are many levers at our disposal. We have put forward a number of very interesting measures, and I'm disappointed to say that the Conservatives voted against many of them. We would like to institute a tax on foreign uh, buyers, non-residents who are coming to scoop up Canadian homes. Um, the Conservatives voted against that. We would like to uh, make sure um, that foreign buyers are banned from, from doing that in the future entirely. Um, and we're also um, putting together concrete measures in order to stop rent evictions, which we know are causing families to get kicked out of their apartments. And so um, I think there are, on both the supply and the demand side, some interesting proposals on the table. Okay, Mr. Polyever, you, you wanted this committee meeting. Um, what do you think the federal government can and should do to alleviate this kind of uh, wicked pressure on the market? Well, the first thing is what they should stop doing. What we've seen in Canada's housing prices over the last two years is a 30% increase in the price, even while the wages and GDP that pay for housing have dropped. So where's the money coming from? Where is the money coming from for the $200 billion increase in the number of houses purchased uh, year over year uh, in 2021? Where is the money coming from to double the number of mortgages to investor uh, purchasers? Where is the money coming from to pay for a record year over year increase in house prices? The answer is that the government is printing the money and pouring that cash into the financial markets, which is being lent out uh, at well below the rate of inflation, 
which means that its effect people are effectively being paid investors wealthy investors are effectively being paid to borrow money and balloon housing prices Ms. Ben Dayen talks about all these wonderful initiatives that her government is doing. It hasn't worked. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. I'm proud to say I voted against everything this government has done on housing, because what they have done is inflated the second worst housing bubble in the world, behind only New Zealand, according to Bloomberg. Uh, and we have the most housing inflation of any G7 country. So this government, first of all, needs to stop inflating the housing market uh, before this bubble bursts and right. blows up our economy. Oh. Okay, L let me go to Mr. Blakey. And I know, Mr. Blakey, do you bo is that the same diagnosis that you have? Uh, and I know we talked about the government printing money. I just want to make sure people are aware the Bank of Canada and the monetary policy. I, I, Mr. Paul, ever you can clarify that after. Is it the low interest rates or not? But let me just bring in Mr. Blakey to see if uh, you believe that's the same diagnosis and what would your solution be? Well, I mean, <clears throat> in terms of the problem in the housing market, one, the, the biggest driver right now is the financialization of housing. And so, um, you know, I think it's I think there is a question about the extent to which the liquidity that government provided to banks it has been turned around and used in order to drive investment in the uh, housing market. And to the extent that that's true, that really is. A problem, you know, we had called at the beginning of the of the pandemic for a much firmer hand with the banks on the part of the government to make sure that that extra fiscal room that the banks were being granted was going to be used to provide mortgage relief for Canadians, um, and that didn't happen in the way that it really ought to have. So then the question is, well, what were the banks doing with that money? And obviously, some of that has has been. Uh, invested in the real estate market. So that is that is one of the things at play that has to be addressed. But from a historical perspective, um, this really hot housing market isn't something new. This is something that's been going on for a long time in Canada now, including before the pandemic. Some of the immediate things that government could be doing right now, as far as we're concerned, I mean, what, one of the things we've heard from nonprofit groups that, that want to build affordable housing and indeed social housing is that they just can't compete with these investors that have a bunch of cash on hand because they their current model is to you know see land or buildings that are available and then they have to chase the cash and that and that process takes too long so a government could set up a fund that would enable um, you know uh, nonprofits with good track records on building affordable and social housing to be right. able to snap up land and buildings when they become available and the other thing that they might consider doing we've seen um, New Zealand do is to say you know once you have your primary residence once you have your first property um, when you go to the bank for a mortgage uh, you, you should be asked to put more down on each successive uh, property so that uh, so oh, that the oh, initial a, down let, payment let isn't, isn't the same okay that's Sorry, a, Evan, go ahead then <laughs> Diane and then mr. Paul ever can you can you react to those things well, I mean, Evan, one of the things that I, I would like to, to say, um, both to Mr. Polyever, but to the Conservatives generally, is that I don't see the, the reason for this obsession of, uh, about talking down the Canadian economy. Why turn away investment at such a critical point um, in Canadians' lives, and especially since we know that the economy is doing quite well. We had 4.5% growth last quarter. We've recovered all of the jobs lost during the pandemic. And, and no, but then I don't some, want to get caught in the politics. I, I don't want to get caught in politics, but, but there is a fair point. Whatever's being done ain't working. The, the housing market's, market's blowing up. And I guess the question is, how do Canadians trust that any of the solutions that you're proposing will actually bring it down? Well, we put forward in our, in the, during the campaign in our platform a number of brand new measures that haven't been tested yet. And anti-flipping tax is one of them that I think will be extremely important going forward. I've mentioned already um, the importance of, of uh, excluding foreign buyers from scooping up Canadian homes. And Canadians agree with that approach. Let us try those measures and let us move forward in a concrete way in order to attack the housing affordability crisis. Mr. Pauly, ever the governor of the Bank of Canada has indicated the central bank will raise key interest rates this year. Will that be enough to cool down the market? Well, we're in a very dangerous spot, Evan, when you inflate a balloon uh, and then you try to pop the balloon, then you end up with a crisis. We saw that in 2008 in the United States. So the, we don't know uh, whether they will now be able to undo the damage they've done. 
Um, you know, uh, everything comes from somewhere and nothing comes from nowhere. Somehow, an extra $200 billion in annual home purchases flooded into the market in 2021. That's an 80% increase. Where did that money come from? Obviously, real dollars had to purchase those houses. Mr. Blakey is right. The very wealthy uh, who can access the cash from the banking system uh, were able to get it in record numbers, a 100% increase in mortgage lending to the investor class in a single year, according to the Bank of Canada. Uh, that money has inflated a massive bubble. Now the question is, how but, can we But most we experts bring... say it's not a bubble. I'm just... I just... Just to be fair, no, like the, I don't the former know head of the CMHC said, said it's not Sorry. a bubble. Well, okay. Evan, well I just Evan, talked. Gonna, to, I just I'm, on the weekend, Evan, I, talk, I, I did talk to David Dodge, the former Bank of Canada governor. Right. He didn't say there was a bubble. I'm, Evan, oh. Evan, yes, you're going to want to, to yeah, expunge Pierre? those comments from the record when this bubble bursts, because we are in serious trouble right now. Our house prices have outstripped incomes at a dramatic pace that is unrivaled by any other country in the world or by any other time in our history. And if, the, if we do not moderate these prices quickly and get our incomes back up to, to the level of growth in our house prices, this bubble is going to burst. And anybody who said today that it wasn't a bubble will have as much egg on their face as the people who told us we'd have no inflation. If, if I might just jump okay. in here, Evan, uh, I think... Yeah, I think, I just, I'm heavy here, so Mr. Blake, if you keep it short, <laughs> I'll give you the last word real quick. Sure. So, I mean, what I would say really quickly is that, um, you know, one of the other things that we have to address here is that the, part of the reason that there's a surplus of investment capital that's being funneled into the real estate market, too, has to do with, you know, we had the PBO put out a report saying that 1% of the population now controls 25% of the wealth. They don't know what to do with it all. And that's partly a product of, of serious slashing of the corporate tax rate and other forms of taxation for the wealthiest Canadians over the last 25 or more years now. And that's part of what's also contributing to the capital that's inflating prices. And until we get a handle on that, there's going to be a very small amount of people with a lot of money not knowing what to do with it and wanting to multiply that money to keep up with the Joneses in the gated communities. And that's a real problem that has to be addressed as well. Okay. The, the good news is the Finance Committee is at least going to meet 10 times to talk about this. It's a real issue. And I hope that we can keep hosting you, all of you, to have a really good discussion about this. It's a vital issue. Uh, there's babies. That, it's going on. It's great. We're all at home. We're all trying to deal with this. Uh, Rachel Ben Diane, Pierre Polyever, Daniel Blakey. I think that might be Mr. Polyever's new baby, by the way. Congratulations on that. Uh, uh, it's on actually the, my three year old. Uh, my my three year old, actually. Okay. But uh, thank you, Evan. I appreciate it.